I know everybody is wrapping up right now, so I just wanted to introduce um, our sponsored uh, presentation, Celebrating Protein Biodiversity. Thank you, Nestle Professional and Sweet Earth uh, for sponsoring this. I wanted to introduce Logan, Chef Logan and Cassie um, to kind of kick off what you guys will be showcasing today. So thank you again and um, enjoy. Thanks, Kelsey. So uh, Logan and I are both really excited to be here with you today to talk about uh, protein biodiversity. And the reason we're excited is because for Sweet Earth, it hits on uh, three different things that are really important to us. So the first is taste and flavor. And so when you look across all of the available plant proteins that we have to work with, we have an enormous number of textures and flavors and colors to play with. It's also important from a nutritional perspective. So I'm a dietitian and any dietitian will tell you that variety is really important. And so variety within the plant world is enormous and that's how we're going to get all of the nutrients that we need in a single day. And then the environment is the third pillar that's really important to Sweet Earth. And we know that biodiversity and protein biodiversity, plant biodiversity is really important in addressing some of the issues that we know the world is facing as we continue to try to feed the population as it grows. And so. That's why this topic is really, really important to us. What we're going to do for you today is we're going to try to get through two demos. And so I am going to kick it right over to Logan to tell us a little bit about the first recipe that we're going to go after. Great. Thank you. Hi, everyone. OK, so today we're going to be highlighting the Sweet Earth Awesome Grounds. And we're going to do those in two applications. The first one's going to be a falafel. Uh, so we have some chickpeas. We have some really nice toasted spices. We're going to blend all that together. We're going to form nice falafels. And then the second demonstration is going to be a lentil dish. So braised lentils with aromatics. And we're going to also showcase the Sweet Earth Awesome Grounds in that as well. Uh, we're going to talk about some wild mushrooms and how they add texture to the dish as well. So we'll get right into the first dish. So we're going to work on the falafel first. Uh, and everybody has the recipes or should have the recipes from the resource page. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll first start adding in the chickpeas. then the chopped onions, the chopped garlic or minced garlic, lemon zest, lemon juice. And then this is cumin and coriander. And what I did yesterday was I toasted the whole seeds and then let them sit and then I ground them just to add like a different depth of flavor. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add that right on in as well. And then I have two herbs. So I have chopped mint and that's gonna add like a really nice like fresh herb flavor. And we have cilantro as well. So we're gonna go ahead and add both of those. And then we're gonna season with salt and pepper. Now I'm going to give this a couple pulses in the food processor and then we'll get right into talking about uh, the Sweet Earth Awesome Grounds and why I'm going to wait. So we're going to mix that up a little bit, just take a spatula and wipe down the sides. And then we're just going to form like a little paste um, out of this. Perfect. All right. Now the Sweet Earth Awesome Grounds. So if you can see that. So I really like using the Sweet Earth Awesome Grounds in this application for a number of reasons. One of them is being that we're going to add some additional protein to this dish. Uh, two, I like that it's going to add a little bit of additional moisture uh, in the cooking process. Sometimes falafels can be a little bit dry on the inside. Uh, so this is going to allow it to really stay nice and moist and have a really nice texture on the inside of that falafel. So we're going to go ahead and give this one more wipe down and then we're going to add in the Sweet Earth Awesome Grounds. And maybe I'll add here, Chef, that the Awesome Grounds are pea protein based. So about 70% of the world's food supply comes from 12 plants and five animal species. 
And so peas are actually not one of those. So pea and some of the other things that we're looking at for the future, like quinoa or wheat, are ways that we can diversify our portfolio in terms of the protein that we offer. Yeah. And two, you know, you can experiment too with different types of peas and see which ones you like the most. And then we're going to let this kind of cut itself and let it form a paste. And then, perfect. Now, typically what I'll do, especially with this paste, is I'll let this sit overnight and let all those flavors meld, right? You have the lemon juice, you have the zest, you have all the herbs. Uh, you don't have to let it sit overnight. You can let it sit for a couple hours in the refrigerator. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll just take a little scoop. Um, two tablespoons is a good size. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to kind of form it and then flatten it just a little bit. And you'll just lay it down. And then in a three, 350 degree Fahrenheit fryer, uh, you can deep fry them. Uh, we've had success baking them. So either way is, is good with us. And then so on when they're cooked, show you. So these were these were fried. Uh, so when they come out, they're really nice and golden brown. You can really smell uh, the cooked uh, spices and the herbs. And then when you break into it, it's just got a really nice texture. Uh, you can give it like a nice little squeeze and see that there's still a good amount of moisture in there and they're very delicious. So definitely give those a try. Those look amazing. Any questions in the chat yet? Oh, we do have a question. That's great. Uh, so um, there's a question about um, if the awesome grounds are available in retail in the New York, New Jersey area. So we do have a uh, retail and a food service version. So the version that Logan is working with today is the food service version of our awesome grounds, which are optimized to perform in a food service setting, right? So we've tested them on the different types of cooking equipment that you would find in a traditional commercial kitchen. But there is a retail version of the grounds that is available nationwide that you should be able to find in your, um, your typical grocery store that you're shopping at. We also have a question, Chef, um, whether or not, uh, or excuse me, which, um, which other beans you might recommend for this recipe? For the falafel mm -hmm. dish? Uh, really, I like any beans. Uh, Izuki beans work really well. Um, you can do black beans as well. Um, you know, you can test and play different varieties or different combination of beans. Uh, chickpeas is, is obviously like the, the classic. Um, but, you know, just innovation-wise, think of some other things. Uh, pinto beans. And would you replace that at a one-to-one? -one? Just replace the beans? Yes, I would definitely do that. Okay, very simple. All right, so then we're going to start working on the second recipe. So this is going to be uh, like a, a North African style lentil dish. Uh, so we're going to use the, a Berber spice, which has chilies, fenugreek, and some really nice toasted warm spices. So uh, allspice, cinnamon, and things like that. So that's going to really help uh, flavor this dish. But another talking point, too, for the Sweet Earth Awesome Grounds is we're going to walk through really the building of flavors through this dish, right? So we're going to add in our mirepoix, and we'll start doing that now. So add in a little bit of oil, and then we're going to add in our carrots and our celery. And we're just going to gradually start building flavor uh, through the sweating of our aromatics, toasting of our spices, We have um, another question just uh, to dig a little bit deeper in how the food service and the retail versions of our recipes differ. And so, as I mentioned earlier, the cooking equipment might vary from a home chef to a, a food service version, so we've optimized for that. But you might also think about um, in a food service setting, you might need to hold the product a little bit longer than you would want to hold it in a, in a home setting when you eat it right away. And so we want to make sure that it retains moisture and texture and everything 
when you're using it in that kind of a setting. So those are the kinds of changes that you'll see um, if you were to compare the two uh, together. All right, so we have carrots, celery, onions, this typical mirepoix. Um, really good to just start basing flavor and use that as the foundation. So we're gonna let those saute for a little bit. And this is gonna be a braised dish as well. So we're just gonna let, we're just gonna cook these until they're aromatic. We don't have, we're not gonna cook them completely in the pan. I want those flavors to really develop in the sauce and when we start braising the rest of the ingredients. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our garlic. And then we'll give that a quick little stir. And again, just until that becomes nice and aromatic, maybe about 35 to 45 seconds. And then we're gonna start toasting our spices. And this is where it becomes really important uh, in the flavor building portion of what we're working on. So this is the Berbera spice. And we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna toast that in with the mirepoix. And we're gonna let those dry chilies and uh, warmer spices kind of open up and now in this dish what we're doing is we're going to be using uh lapoy lentils which are really small lentils and we've cooked those off beforehand um but if you want you can cook the lentils in this dish uh you could add them now and just give them like a nice saute with the rest or you can like we did here pre-cook them and then we'll just kind of work it that way so now I'm going to add in our mushrooms now the mushrooms are going to give a really nice earthiness to the dish and a nice texture as well So we pre-seared the mushrooms in advance just to get them nice and caramelized. We're going to add in some tomato paste. Now I like adding in the tomato paste in this step uh, just because I like to cook out a little bit of that paste. Maybe I'll interrupt just for a moment here. Um, so we had some interest in potentially getting a sample of the food service version. So if you navigate to our, um, our booth and hit our contact us, that will take you to our website where you can put in your information to be contacted by one of our sales representatives and they can give you that sample that um, you're looking for if you're interested. Thanks for that question. All right, so now I'm adding in our cooked lentils. So now the dish is really starting to like come together so lentils, the vegetables are all in, seasoning. We're gonna season with salt and pepper just as soon as we get the liquid in. And then we're gonna let this pan braise. All right, so now we're gonna add in the awesome grounds. So again, I like this product in a saute application or a braise application like this as well. The product really takes the flavors on of the dish, so all those spices, all that flavor building that we're doing, it's really gonna benefit the product and the dish. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add that right in, and we're just gonna mix it up. And Chef, we have a question um, about why did you pre-cook the mushrooms? Why not just add them here? So I pre-cooked the mushrooms just because I wanted that extra flavor of caramelized mushroom in there. Because there was there's so much moisture in with adding uh, the the onions and the celery and the carrots, they give off so much moisture when we cook uh, that I didn't, I wanted the caramelization on the mushrooms. All right, so now that we got everything there, we're gonna, I have a, a vegetable demi that we're gonna use. So we just took some vegetable scraps, roasted them off really heavily, and then we thickened it. We'll add that in. And then we're going to bring this up to a simmer and then we'll cook this for about 10 to 12 minutes. And then I'm just breaking up the little pieces in here so that they look like nice grounds uh, to replicate beef or pork or other proteins.
And, and so then, all those recipes are available at the link that um, Kelsey reposted if you're interested um, in that, um, if you want to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, Logan, earlier you and I were talking about heirloom uh, options for plants and how that's another option for increasing uh, biodiversity, right? So um, we have a limited number of plants that we typically eat, but then even within certain plants, we don't always eat all of the available options. So one thing you could do is to use a sort of highlight a lesser known version of a tomato or an onion or garlic as a way to also contribute to biodiversity in yet another layered way. Yes, absolutely. You know, and I think the other thing too is just getting down to the farms and talking to the farmers about, um, you know, just kind of what ingredients they're growing and how they're growing it. Yes. You know, there's a lot of options to go and do a you pick a uh, farm where you can go and pick your own vegetables and talk to the farmers and understand about the land and the things that they're doing, what initiatives they're doing. Uh, I highly encourage things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And we have another question just to repeat some of the ingredients that are in the Awesome Grounds. So the, um, the primary ingredient that's bringing protein and fiber is a pea protein. Um, but another question we often get is whether or not this is gluten-free, because that's often a concern for folks. So it does have um, some wheat gluten in it as well. Uh, it doesn't have any other allergens, uh, but it does have a bit of wheat gluten. So uh, that's often a question that people ask. Um, if you're interested in that full ingredient list, if you were to navigate to our contact us, put your information in, we could get you those uh, specific details um, of the full ingredient list, um, if that's something you're, you're quite interested in. And then just to finish the dish, so all I'm adding in at the end is uh, some lemon juice just to bring, you know, this is a very earthy dish. It's got a lot of depth of flavor. So that little bit of acid is going to really bring out the flavor and all the spices and the awesome grounds as well. So, and because we were using carrots uh, with the tops in them, we wash those, chop them up and pick them. And so we'll use those to finish almost like a finishing herb. And then we'll just kind of plate up just a little bit so everybody can see. Uh, there's a clarifying question. Uh, did, uh, did you say you're using carrot tops in the recipe or carrots? Uh, in the recipe, I believe it's carrots. Um, we just so, so happen to have the carrot tops, uh, so we just chop those up and put them in there as well. Perfect. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, of course. That was quite a marathon of two recipes in 20 minutes. Chef Logan, I'm super impressed. Yeah, time went um, quick. It was fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so thanks for joining us to talk about uh, protein biodiversity today. And thanks for your great questions for those of you that sent in some questions. Oh, um, a follow-up question on the carrot tops. Do you typically use those? It sounds like it, it's kind of an optional thing. If you have them, go ahead and add them. It, it adds some extra color, but not necessary. Not necessary, just using all the, using all the parts of the vegetable, really. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times we uh, throw away a lot of things that can be reused in, in dishes and things like that. And I think carrot tops is just one of those. Thanks, Chef. Awesome. Thank you, Chef. And thank you, Cassie, so much for joining us today. Um, greatly appreciate Nestle Pro, uh, Professionals' participation and our partnership. So um, we'll just be wrapping up here. And I know they'll be in their expo booth um, after the next general session. So we will see you at the live stream. And then any other questions, please join them in the expo booth. Um, thank you again so much, Cassie and Logan. And I will see you later. Thanks, Kelsey. Thank you. Bye, everyone. See you a bit later.